Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm here to show you three different examples of something to do with your stencils today. I've kind of been on a stencil buying kick recently. Heads up, you'll probably see a lot of stencils <laughs> in my cards and in these videos for the next little while. Um, because I'm acquiring all of these fun new stencils, I'm looking for ways to use them. And this is just one of the techniques that I've seen done that I thought would be really fun to show you guys today. I'm going to be showing you three different ways to do emboss resist with your stencil images. So I'm going to walk you through a metallic embossing. I'm going to walk you through using clear embossing powder. And with the clear, I'm actually going to show you how to do that with watercolor and also with ink blending. So I hope that gives you guys some ideas. Let's get into it. The first card I'm working on is the one with the heart shape. So I've taken one of the dies from the Nested Hearts die set from Simon Says Stamp and used it to cut out the shape out of some masking paper. This masking paper is from Simon Says Stamp and it is cut to four and a quarter by five and a half. So it's the exact size of my finished card. And so I positioned that heart exactly where I wanted it on the final card. I'm now going to place the mask on top of some cardstock. This is Nina Classic Crest Solar White 80 pound cardstock. And I'm very carefully placing this heart mask over the cardstock here. And I'm adhering just one side of it first and then wrapping it around and adhering the other side. The way I've cut that mask is it has the release paper on the back and the release paper is actually cut into different strips. So it makes it easy to apply to your project. So now I'm going to get into the actual stenciling part. So I'm going to put down my Tonic Easy Clean mat. And this is going to not only protect my work surface, but it also gives me a slick surface that I can clean the ink off of really easily. I'm taping my paper down to my work surface here. You could also tape it to your stencil, and I'll show that in the second example. I'm using the Bold Blooms stencil from Newton's Nook. This is a great stencil because it has some nice wide areas that are open, but there's also a lot of areas in between those images for some blending to happen. So I've taped down the stencil as well, and now I'm going to take some Versamark ink. You can use whatever embossing ink that you prefer. I just really like to use Versamark because it's very sticky, and it stays sticky for a little bit of time, so you don't have to rush when it comes to applying your embossing powder. So I'm kind of squishing it down over the stencil and giving it a little wiggle, and that makes sure that it gets all the way into those crevices in that stencil. So I've removed that stencil. I'm going to take this off my work surface here. The mask is staying there. The mask is not going to move till after I'm done blending. So I'm going to be doing my heat embossing over the top. This is some clear embossing powder from Ranger. I'm just sprinkling that on over all of this heart area. You can kind of see it when I tip it in the light. And then I took my heat tool and I melted the embossing powder until it was smooth and shiny. Um, sometimes with clear embossing powder, especially on top of white cardstock, it's really hard to see. So just tip it in the light and when it turns shiny, you know it's been melted. I'm going to use some different colors from this 2018 add-on um, of mini ink cubes from Gina K Designs. I'm only going to be using the colors that are in this set, so I'll have the set linked down below in the supply section. Starting out with the color Sea Glass, and I'm using some life-changing blender brushes from Picket Fences Studio, and I'm blending that on here right at the bottom. I'm going to keep all this blending in real time, um, but I will speed it up for the other card that I have blending on. But I just wanted you to see about how long it takes to really blend and get these colors moving. I'm now using a Plum Punch, and I'm making sure I overlap those areas. You can see where that embossing powder was applied. It's resisting the color. You get a little bit of a faint kind of ghosting of the color, like a really pale purple going over this. But for the most part, it resists that ink completely. I'm now using Coral Reef up in that top corner of the heart. And I just want a really good mix of color. I think if I was to do this blending again, I would blend on more of that sea glass color because in the end, I realized that I kind of lost the blue shade, but it turned out okay, it wasn't so bad. I'm now using Lucky Clover, which is a little more of a brighter green. Um, it's kind of a mid-tone bright green, not um, like really limey or whatever. <laughs> uh, so now I'm using Key Lime, which is more lime, and it's much more yellow and green. And I'm kind of blending that over that area. Trying to not blend too much in the center because I don't want the colors to turn muddy. 
but I am, I'm going to stop the blending here for a bit. I will come back after I remove the mask though, because I realized I wanted some more intense green or teal shades. So now I'm peeling up this mask and because this mask has so much area that it's stuck down to the cardstock and because I've ink blended it, I can't really use this mask again. So I'm going to go ahead and just um, dispose of this mask. But if you have any masks that you've used that don't curl up like this when you remove them, stick them to something like a table or even just onto a page protector or some packaging, and then you can reuse that mask later. So here's where I decided to add a little more color in here. I'm going to bring in some tranquil teal and kind of just intensify that green shade over on the side. It's not going to turn real like bluish teal because I am blending right on top of those other green shades, but I did like having that color intensified a little bit. So I cleaned up my work surface there and then I used that baby wipe to sort of wipe off some of the color off the embossing. And that just slides right off. It does leave a little bit of that color ghosting that I was talking about before behind, but for the most part, it cleans it up really well. So for the greeting on this card, I'm going to use a stamp set from Simon Says Stamp. This is the amazing stamp set. All of the greetings on my three cards today will come from this same exact stamp set. And for this first greeting, I have this kind of large stacked words uh, design and I'm going to stamp and heat emboss in white embossing powder onto black cardstock. This is licorice twist cardstock from Basil and I've just stamped that in Versamark ink. I'm applying some alabaster embossing powder from Brutus Monroe. This is just uh, their, their white embossing powder. I'll heat set that until it's smooth and melted and then I cut these pieces apart into little tiny strips. I wanted to spread that greeting out so that it takes up more space on my card. For the card base, I'm using some of that same cardstock that I used for the actual blending, except this is the thicker version. This is 110 pound Nina Classic Crest Solarite cardstock. I trimmed down that blended piece so it was just a little bit smaller than my card front. So the finished size of the blended piece is four inches wide by five and one quarter tall. Put some foam adhesive on the back of that just to pop it up off the surface of my card front. And then I uh, adhered all of those little tiny strips of the greeting. And I just put some thin foam strips behind those to adhere them down onto the card. So now I'm going to move on to my second card. I'm going to do some more um, ink blending over, ink re um, over some embossed resist. I'm using the Love Circuit stencil from Peppy Doodle. This one has not as many open areas. So I thought this would be really cool for some metallic embossing because the smaller areas will have the metallic detail. So this time I'm taping my paper to the stencil. This is so that I can pick up the stencil and move it around if I need to. This is just another way to make sure things don't move around um, while you're actually using the stencil. And I'm going to ink smush my Versamark ink pad right on top of that stencil just like I did with that first example. This time I'm going to be using some a gilded embossing powder from Brutus Monroe. It's a nice gold shade. And after I remove that stencil, I can just sprinkle this embossing powder over the top of this design. This is kind of cool because it's almost like a background stamp. So you can get this really intricate design, but it's a stencil, so it's even more versatile. I'm hitting that with my heat tool until it's smooth and melted. You can see how that gold embossing powder shines in the light. I'm now doing a bunch of ink blending like I showed you before. This time I'm blending um, from the outer edges of the cardstock. I'm starting with the color Key Lime and just bringing that in. My idea is to have the most intense color be coming from the heart shape in the center. So now I'm going to take the color Sea Glass and I'm going to work this out from the center and um, it turns very green once it hits that um, more yellowy green shade on the outer edges. But I wanted to have this kind of blended look coming out from the center of that heart. So I've sped up the video four times, so this is pretty speedy compared to the blending before. So it does take a little bit of time to do all this blending, but completely worth it because this really is the main focal area of the whole card design. So I'm going to switch to a more intense color. I'm going to switch over to Tranquil Teal, and I'm going to blend that out from the very center. And I'm trying to get that um, coming out, blending out. And I actually blend out quite a bit past the center. Um, I probably could have skipped that sea glass color in the end because I really did kind of blend over that entire color. 
I'm going to add some more intense green. I didn't like how it wasn't quite transitioning as much. So I'm going to use Lucky Clover and just go around that kind of ring of blue and add more of this green shade. This is going to give it um, a much more intense green shade as it transitions from the blue to that yellow green. Okay, so after I had all the blending done, I trimmed down this piece just like I did with the first card. So it was five and a quarter tall by four inches wide. And then I used some foam tape to adhere that down to the front of my card. To finish off this card, I cut out, I stamped and heat embossed another greeting from that amazing stamp set from Simon. And then adhered that with some foam tape. Okay, so for my third card, we're in the home stretch here, I'm going to do some watercoloring. So I've switched to watercolor paper, and I'm using the Leaves stencil from Simon Says Stamp. This watercolor paper is Strathmore, and I've taped down my stencil directly onto that watercolor paper, and I kind of went around the edges so that it would protect the paper while I add my Versamark ink on top. Doing that same kind of ink smushing and a wiggle coming down onto that stencil, making sure I get all those crevices on the stencil design. Now applying some more clear embossing powder from Ranger. Heat setting that with my heat tool. And then I'm gonna go right into kind of a watercolor technique, but I'm gonna be doing some ink smushing. Starting out with the color Key Lime, smushing that down onto my work surface here. Once again, this is the Tonic Easy Clean Matte. It's a nice slick surface to do this technique. I then use Tranquil Teal and also some Plum Punch. And then I'm going to use some Coral Reef down here at the bottom. After I have these smushed onto my work surface, I'm going to take a spray bottle. This is the Distress Sprayer from Tim Holtz. I just sprayed all that ink so it was moving. And then I'm going to press my watercolor paper face down onto my work surface. And I'm going to walk my fingers over this and then kind of lift it up. You get this really fun watercolor effect. So I'm going to spray a couple of these areas to get the color moving just a little bit more. But um, And then I'm going to take a baby wipe and I'm going to try to sop up some of the color that's collecting on top of that clear embossing. Just because I don't want it to dry right on top of it. I then use my heat tool to speed up the drying process. This is just the first layer of color. I'm going to clean up my work surface here and I'm just going to use individual colors now so that I can target the areas where I want those colors. Starting out with that plum punch, I'll smush that onto my work surface, spray it with my spray bottle to get those colors really moving, and then I can uh, smush my paper right down onto that and that just puts the purple in the areas where I want it. This is a way to control where the color is being added. So I dried all of that plum punch that I added and added another layer after that. And then I moved on to Tranquil Teal. I'm gonna add a little bit of blue to some areas where I think it needed a little more detail. The thing that's kind of cool about using inks for this um, in, instead of watercolors or instead of distress inks is that the inks from Gina Kay and from Simon and Lon Demont, things, um, those inks that really like dry back, they're waterproof inks. So after you dry them onto your project, they're not going to come back up when you wipe over them with a baby wipe. So I can really wipe all of the ink off of the surface of the clear embossing powder, and it's really not going to disturb that inking around it. I've created a five by seven card base out of some Nina Classic Crest Solar White 110 pound cardstock. And then I use some foam tape to adhere my watercolor piece down onto the card front. So for the greeting on this final card, I wanted to use one of the larger greetings from the stamp set. So I'm gonna kind of place the stamp set over the top of the card to try to figure out where I want it to be and kind of plan in my mind how I wanna use this greeting. So I decided I wanted to have it overlapping the areas where the leaves are, so I'm going to use some vellum. I'm stamping onto the vellum with some Versamark ink, and then I'm going to do some heat embossing. So um, I'm going to use some white heat embossing. This is the same alabaster embossing powder that I used on the black cardstock for the greetings on the previous cards. And after I have that alabaster embossing powder applied, I'm going to... Uh, shake the excess off and then hit it with my heat tool until it's smooth and melted. So when I placed this vellum piece over the top of my card, I realized that it was sort of getting lost. It didn't have enough um, 
kind of color behind it to really be noticeable. So I knew I needed to um, double or triple up the layers of vellum. So in order to do vellum, I'm going to use the Xyron Creative Station Light machine. Um, they sent this to me, oh gosh, I think it was even a couple years ago, and I haven't really used it much, and so I broke it out. Now this can do 5-inch wide adhesive, but you can also put in the 3-inch refills or the 3-inch uh, adhesive rolls. So I have the 3-inch roll in there. And I can put that right through the machine. Now there is a blade on the back that cuts it, but for whatever reason, my blade's not working. So I'm using my X-Acto knife to cut it off. And now I have adhesive over the entire surface of that vellum. And this is going to make it so I can um, double or triple up the layers of vellum without the adhesive showing. This is why I like using a Xyron machine for this. I have a little Xyron Creative Sticker machine, but it's only two inches wide, so it really couldn't accommodate this large grating. So I think I, I can anticipate myself using this Creative Station Light more in the future, just because now I really love doing these vellum um, greetings or embellishments like this. So I have two layers of vellum now, and I'm gonna do one more layer of vellum. So I'm gonna run this through that Xyron machine one more time, and then I can adhere it to the vellum again, and then I will have three layers of vellum, and that's really going to help my greening stand out on top of that somewhat busy watercolor background. So I'm gonna place this down, and then I have three layers of vellum. So I'm gonna go around with my scissors and kind of carefully cut this out, um, leaving a little bit of a border around the words. I want a little bit of that vellum showing around those edges. So after I have this entire greeting cut out, I'm then going to run it through my Xyron machine for a third time. This is going to put adhesive all on the back, and this makes it so when I adhere it to my card front, no adhesive will be showing. You could do a similar technique by taking some liquid glue and um, smushing it all over the back of your embellishment, making sure the entire vellum is covered, and then placing it onto your card front. Okay, so I'm peeling that off. This basically made it one big huge sticker and then I'm pressing that down onto the front of the card. So when I do watercolor backgrounds like this, I love adding some sequins on top because it really makes it shine. It makes it look kind of magical to me. So I'm using some Darice sequins. These are the crystal color sequins and I love these in particular because they kind of take on whatever color is beneath them. So it's really kind of cool. I'm using the eight millimeter and the five millimeter. And once again, everything will be linked down below in the supply section if you want to check those out. So here are all three cards using some stencils for embossed resist. I hope you guys enjoy these card examples. I think they're colorful and fun. And I also loved using those inks from Gina K Designs. Thanks so much for watching today. Just want to remind you that all of the supplies that I used today, including the stencils and the embossing powders and everything I've used today is listed down below in the video description in the supply section. And I've included links to online stores so you can find those items really quickly. On screen, I've got two more videos for you to check out. These are some fun cards with stencil use. I hope you guys will check those out. Like I said before, I'm going to be using a lot of stencils coming up. So um, if you like to play along, you might want to pull out all those stencils out of your stash. Thanks so much for watching today, and I will see you guys in the next video.